that I installed in my clinic uh, about one year ago. I did around uh, 3,000 upper eyelid nephroplasties so far, surgically, and uh, still I was uh, having patients that were not yet uh, ready for this. And also patients who might have uh, a lot of skin excess, they, who are not willing to undergo a surgery, then we have something here to offer with this uh, plasma energy device that uh, gives us uh, the possibility of a good skin tightening uh, with a little downtime and uh, very fast treatment options. I already prepared the patients. I did some local anesthesia, but you can also do this procedure in, with only a numbing cream. So uh, I also use uh, lidocaine and tetracaine cream, but here just for the comfort, um, it's better to use it uh, easy and fast with uh, <coughs> lidocaine locally. So if you might have uh, here a focus on that device so it can show you uh, just in a few words how easy this uh, works. Plasma energy is ionization of air. So you have the four different uh, stages of uh, matter like solid, liquid, gas and light. So we are just uh, transferring air into uh, light and this, this will uh, deliver an energy laser and we have fractional lasers. But um, in my opinion, this works uh, much more intense in skin tightening, especially in the upper eyelids uh, than, uh, for example, my CO2 laser uh, does. So, um, and another feature of this device is that we have a fractional energy, so we really can uh, um, design the energy to the patient's needs, because uh, if it's not fractionated, we might get easily very hot with a lot of energy, and especially in darker skin patients, this is uh, a great risk of uh, inducing hyperpigmentation. So, uh, if you now you see the focus, uh, it's left, it says plasma, uh, plasma acne, uh, you can treat superficial wrinkles, uh, lentiginous, so for these I uh, use my lasers, but you can also treat scars, fibromas, what it is really great for because it has very focused delivery of energy. If I have um, sebaceous gland hyperplasia, or syringomas around the eyes. That's also a very fast procedure to remove them and uh, it's also more precise than uh, with my Erbium Yak laser re removing uh, these lesions. Also uh, xantelasmata, a quick and easy procedure. You can treat uh, warts, you can treat viral warts on the hands, feet, you can treat um, genital warts, so it also goes into medical treatments. Um, in order to uh, mark out, so you see she doesn't have a lot of skin excess and usually probably you wouldn't uh, say she doesn't need uh, upper eyelid blepharoplasty, but if you look close at her, on this eye, can you close please? This eye doesn't have uh, had any local anesthesia yet and you, you see the skin excess. So this is um, a good patient. Of course, when we use, you see here the lid crease, if you mark your surgery, it's a little bit below the lid crease. And then open your eyes, please. You see, so you would, and close, close again. So it would be probably like this. The skin excess, you would excise. If you want to shrink the skin with this device, then of course, if you want to shrink this amount of tissue, uh, this is why, of course, we go to a larger area. And um, you already did disinfection. Um, so, usually I use uh, sterile gloves. What I also did show here is, um, I, in my clinic, I put just, can you see it here? I put okay. just a glove usually a sterile glove about this, so I have a sterile handpiece and then I can start working. To start the machine, maybe you can just briefly focus here. 
it's one click blepharoplasty and you see down here the fractionation of the system and up here the energy. So um, sometimes you might uh, need to change them but usually the preset parameters are already very well for this um, treatment. Go over here and deliver little dots. <coughs> This is basically what you're doing then for the next five minutes. But we can ask you some questions during the procedure? Yes, of course. Okay. And you see when I... It's in between like little thunder lightnings from the tip. Of, the of that needle coming to the skin and then it using Well, please, the how many sessions the patients need for the, to have a nice result? How many? Three sessions. sessions. Yeah, three. Um, so for her, this would be uh, one session. If I have um, patients with more skin excess, I uh, did repeat this treatment after two to three months, but it's actually amazing how much um, shrinking of the tissue we will get over the following weeks. We know that uh, from our laser resurfacings, first the patients look horrible, then after the healing phase, everything is nice and tightened, and when the swelling goes away, then we are back to uh, the result how it was before and after in the course of four to six months then we see um, the final result. So I kind of do the same area as I would excise and we'll go over it as well. So you say just one session for these patients? Yes. It will be <laughs> the downtime, of course, um, if you deliver more energy and if you're treating the patient um, a little uh, heavier, then, then the downtime, usually it's two to three to four days, but it can be up to one week. And what I do when I have a lot of skin excess, I do go from the lid margin to the eyebrow in order to really get a very large amount of collagen tissue shrinking. So you see she is at ease, no pain. Of course, you here, up here you smell the burning of the skin. I go a little zigzag in order to, to not create uh, lines and then I go further down what I also do is that I put a few more extra dots into the lip crease in form in order to um, point out and make that more visible so you see here where the white line was so I go over it again. So this is the kind of procedure, see one, do one, teach one. So now you saw one, you do one and afterwards you can do the teaching mm -hmm. yourself. It's really very easy. And uh, the level of satisfaction is um, amazingly extremely high even if I don't see the result yeah, it was very uh, light and, uh, yes so it's and really we, it's, saw, we saw nothing and we come back to the of plastic it's really important about patient uh, selection that's one thing and the other thing is uh, that we not only should that we should not only treat the area we would excise in the surgery what we are used to excise in the surgery 
but actually treat from the lid margin to up yeah. here to the eyebrow and if I treat this whole area then I get good results and to define the lid margin a bit more so I spend more energy um, and uh, I also started with only treating smaller areas and my results were not so satisfying increasing the area really does uh, improve the result and also if we like if you go back to, to other devices what we uh, might use like uh, when I use uh, a therapy tightening down here um, I not only treat this area I want to lift this up so I need to treat all the way back here so we need to uh, so only one minute please okay Sorry, can we start? Um, I can finish the other side while my colleague is uh, treating his patient. Just showing. My, my question is very short. Uh, who can do this kind of procedure? Plastic surgeon or dermatologist? Um, actually, uh, you need to be a doctor. You should have. Uh, a lot of clinical experiences and also experiences in eyelid surgery but um, for this you see how easy it is um, so who can hold a needle can do that device to, to, to put it very basic but actually I mean we have heard this excellent lecture on anatomy and um, we are here all to be very well trained so safety first and uh, please uh, if you if you want to do this, uh, be aware what you are not doing. So just to sum up, filling in the temples here, giving that a little bit more of support, this will add a bit more of swelling. You see how this also lifts up and uh, does improve the reflects and the shades uh, and lightings in the in the face. Thank you for your attention. With the plasma uh, devices. Which one uh, you would rank uh, to be the best on, on experience? Um, so, of course, um, the one I, I was choosing here, that's the plus Marge, because what's different to the others is that you have this fractionated uh, delivery of energy. And as I already said, um, you need to uh, deliver your energy between 80 and 100 degrees for optimum sublimation effect and um, in this fine and very thin skin uh, it's better to have the fractionated energy. You have also seen on the screen when I was pointing out the, the preset parameters that you, you choose your own um, energy level plus then the frequency uh, of the uh, fractionation. I mean, with with the plexer, you have three different sets for for, for I mean uh, the frequency, but for the dust, you do have uh, different frequencies, and for the plasma H also, is it just the temperature, the energy which is which comes free? Um, yeah, with the with the fractionation, uh, it's easier for you to not overcorrect. And especially uh, in darker uh, skin type patients, it's very dangerous if you if you deliver too much energy and you deliver too much heat. That's also why um, I would not recommend. I was often asked the question whether radio frequency would do the same. Uh, also, there you would deliver more heat and not as precise, uh, uh, producing these little dots that are healing uh, without any scars.